Scientist. I'm a professor of uh, computer science here at Drake University. Sitting next to me is Eric Manley. And over on another computer um, that you can see is uh, Professor Dan Alexander and one of our students, uh, Katie Roth. So the first thing I think I'd start off with Lloyd, is actually um, take advantage of the fact that we have a student here. And, I, and Katie, I wonder if you could share a little bit about um, why you came to Drake and, and what you like about the computer science program here. Well, I came to Drake because I liked the smaller school atmosphere. Um, I applied to some really big schools, but I like how the classroom sizes here are really small and you really get to know your professors and you get a good relationship, which I think is really important when you have questions, you don't feel so nervous or lost. You can really get the attention you need from the smaller school. And what I really like about the computer science program is how they have a variety of different classes can take but also all the professors are really good at teaching all the material and going through everything and I just thought it was a very math major but the computer science teachers are so enthusiastic it <laughs> pulled me in <laughs> so you can really tell they're really passionate and care about their students and the material they're teaching which I think makes a very engaging class and it's challenging but in a fun way and when you get it right you, you feel really good that's great. So, That's so great. Dan, let me kind of uh, deflect that question to you now, too. What do you think about... Why did uh, I come to Drake? Yeah, <laughs> and what do you think about... What's unique about Drake, and what do you think we have to offer students? Well, I would say what Katie what Katie says is is, is, is one of the things, but, you know, I'm going to contrast this with, you know, my daughter goes to a school that I'm not going to name, but it's a really good school, and they're, they've won an award for the best teaching in the country. And what she tells me about, like, some of the things she has about trying to get in touch with their professors, how hard it is, how they have to schedule appointments in advance. Um, it just seems like here, that's not the way we do things. You know, if, if we're on campus, our office doors are open, students feel free to drop by anytime. And so I, I, think, I think that the thing that they get that they don't get at very few other places is just this intense, not, not only just an, an intense accessibility with professors, but also a chance to really build a good relationship, which, you know, if they are involved in a research program or advising for grad school, or advising for a job, or applying for an REU, uh, anything like that. I, I think that they just get more access to the to the faculty. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so I'm going to hand over to Eric. Eric, talk about a little bit why what you like to be about um, why you like being a professor at Drake. Um, all right. The, the the reason I like being at Drake is because I like working with students. Um, I get to work with a lot of really good students here. Um, I have, I feel like a lot of really cool uh, research projects and just projects that, that students can get involved in. Um, and, you know, I just want to work with undergraduates. And I think that that's like Dan was saying, you know, we're, we're here for the student. That's why the professors at Drake are here. Um, but the other benefit is that being at a smaller school and a school that doesn't have, say, like a graduate program uh, in, in computer science. Um, that means that the undergraduates are the ones who are, who are working with all of the professors. So um, you're not gonna have to compete for your professor's time with graduate students who are there to do mostly research. Um, so, you know, we're, we're here to work with the students. Yeah, so Katie, tell, tell, uh, tell me about, about like, the out of classroom kinds of experiences that you've had. Yeah. Um, they've all been really good. I do research here, which is a really good experience. Um, I got into an REU last year, which was really fun, and I think it's a partly because of my experience and the fact that faculty members really get to know you, so you can get a really personalized recommendation letter with these students. So could you explain a little bit about what an REU is? I, I, I mentioned it too, but didn't really explain it. I'm, maybe a lot of people don't know about what that is. So an REU is a research experience for undergraduates, and um, so basically you apply to a program oftentimes at different schools and they get funding and then you get different research projects that you can work on over the summer so like mine was at a big state school so they made me to come there they gave me housing and then you learn a little about what area or topic your research is in and then you get straight into researching that as an undergraduate and it's really good to for me I went to really big school so I got to see kind of the atmosphere and then a lot of times you get to learn more about grad school during it, but it's just really good hands-on experience as an undergraduate and seeing what grad school might be like, as well as just getting extra experience. So I think the small school actually really helped me get into one and get that experience. Um, 
and then so I did my I'm in my research group which uh, I think is really good as Professor Manley said you get the interaction with the faculty which is really nice and then you get that research experience instead of maybe the grad student who would be the re researching um, I wanted to add just one thing about the REUs is it's it's something that we really encourage our students to do and whether they're going to go to grad school or whether they're going to go and get a job and and it's we've, we've had really good luck getting students into REU programs and it's a really good way for them sort of to balance what they do in the classroom with some with some practical experience so it's it's we work you know I think we work pretty hard to to, to help them get in and then when they come back, they can also work with us to continue the research as well. But sorry, I was just going to say that um, I, I, I think another thing that students tend to like about Drake is that our curriculum is structured in such a way that um, it's first of all, it's you, you can get out in four years. Um, we definitely make it so that you can take the classes that you need to take. You can take the classes you want to take, but also um, you, it's not like every single credit hour that you're taking is laid out ahead of time. Um, one of the things we do as advisors when we're working with students is kind of planning out the course sequence that will work best for you, will help you meet your academic goals, help you kind of get set up to, to have the kind of career that you want to have. Um, and a lot of times that includes doing something very multidisciplinary. And um, there's a lot of room for that. A lot of our students have more than one major. Um, like Katie said, how she had a uh, uh, a major in computer science and mathematics. Are those the only two, Katie? Yeah, okay. So some students have even more than that. So I just, you know, and, and the nice thing about like computer science and math and, um, and data analytics is definitely going to be this way. Data analytics is a major which is designed from the ground up to be very multidisciplinary. So depending on what you want to do with it, there's a lot of different areas you can explore. You can take a very, um, you know, you can work on data analytics and bioinformatics. You can work on data analytics and economics. There's just like a, a, a ton of different options that you can go with. Uh, and, and a lot of our students, like I said, because they, you know, they can get done with the general education requirements and they can get done with the requirements for their major, um, that really only takes up between the two about, about two thirds of the courses they'll take here. So that leaves a lot of room for exploring other interests, um, for getting additional majors and minors, or just taking courses that that you're interested in. I mean, we have a lot of students who, you know, so a lot of students will do things like math and computer science together, but we also get a lot of students who do things like theater and computer science or, or creative writing and math. I mean, this is, um, I, I think that that's sort of a, a, an opportunity that a lot of students really, really like to seize here and we try to make that work for them. The other thing that I would add to that is also there's, um, in addition to, say, research opportunities, there's opportunities for internships. So if you want to go more the, the uh, industry route, we have lots of opportunities and kind of partners in the Des Moines area and elsewhere as well that could, could get you uh, on a, the fast track to a really great job. Um, the other thing I was going to say is that there's uh, opportunities to study abroad, too. Either during the semester or through our RJ term, there's opportunities to go you know, kind of outside the country to explore options as well. I wanted to follow up a little bit on the internships, especially with data analytics. Uh, I mean, one of the one of the nice things about Drake is the location in Des Moines, and there's several major, um, you know, international finance and insurance companies that have their headquarters in Des Moines, and they need people. They need new new blood coming in every year, and so they're very interested in working with us uh, with the data analytics program, and looking at us as a source for for new ideas and for and for employees that that are um, that, that are well trained and and, and data analytics it, it's 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 a hybrid thing and it's it's got little, it's got computer science it's got statistics it's got mathematics it's got a it's got a, a whole range of different things and uh, and I, I think the employers in town are looking at, at us as a source of interns and then interns well, I've heard interns described both by students and by employers is really an extended job interview. So if a student does an internship during the school year, um, they may do it for a few hours a week, and the and the and the, the corporation will or, the, or the, will uh, sort of make allowances to fit it into their time, or they do it in the summer for a full time job, paying job. Uh, they, you do that for a couple of years, and you get a good feel for the company, and they get a good feel for you. And often, what happens out of these internships is a really good job offer. So I think that's one of the things that we have. 
that links up with what we do in computer science, uh, mathematics, and I, I think particularly data analytics that, that a lot of other programs don't have is this sort of access to people who are going to be employing you. So from there, I'm going to take it, uh, kind of address this, this, the slides I have here. Um, most of these pictures, two of the three of the pictures are, are groups of students working actually on a kind of an extracurricular programming uh, a competition that we have um, every fall. So uh, uh, what we do is um, give students in groups of, of two or three, and uh, we go to a, a programming contest a site in which students work uh, for a, a four or five hours on different computer science types of problems. And the students that get the most problems solved correctly you know, within a, a time frame then, then win this contest. And to prepare students for this contest, we have this uh, sort of celebratory computer science uh, pizza party at my house where we play Ms. Pac-Man and, and have, have, have fun. So we kind of have a, a lot of fun, but still study, study hard with computer science. Um, next thing on this slide uh, is basically talking about the, the curriculum that Eric kind of addressed already. The fact that uh, we have lots of different options. Our first two introductory classes start from the ground floor, but, but kind of really ramp you up and teach the foundations of computer science rather quickly. Um, the options we have after taking those first two courses are uh, if you want to study computer graphics or artificial intelligence or app development, or you can see the list here, uh, lots of different options for kind of furthering your, your career in, in computer science, lots of different application areas. Um, one of those examples is uh, robotics, we have a robotics class where we have students kind of um, program these, these uh, uh, you know, five, six, seven different ro uh, robots um, in parallel in sequence and uh, to kind of use these program, these robotic, uh, programmable robotics uh, to, to solve some tasks. So that's a, a kind of a unique class that we have. I would say also with the, with the robotics course, we usually teach that during our January term, which is like a, a really super intensive term where you take like one class over a three week period in January. And so the students who, who do this class, um, they'll typically like meet in the morning, um, you know, learn about things that are necessary to, to, to program and build their robots. And then, um, and then they work on, on them in the afternoon. And it's just like, you know, they build a lot of camaraderie from working on these, uh, you know, action intensive group projects um, over, you know, a short period of time. So go ahead. That, then the other unique class I was gonna kind of highlight here is our software engineering class, which um, our software engineering class, we, we really focus on practicing software engineering. So we get groups of students uh, three computer science students paired with a journalism student and a, journal, a student from graphic design. We put them in groups and we basically have them form a team and tell them to make an app, to develop an app and use all the different skill sets that exist amongst the, the five students to create a, a, an app that could be sold at the, on the Google Play Store. Um, and so we've had, actually had several apps that have been successful in, in making it to market. Um, here's an example of one. You can kind of see the, the graphic design of, of this pocket botanist app. Another one is a, a doppelganger app that's, uh, I believe, that's available on the store right now as well. Um, also, like Katie alluded to this earlier, there's lots of opportunities for undergraduate research opportunities. So we'll take students under our wings and uh, kind of uh, explore something that isn't inside the classroom. So some, some problem that hasn't been solved quite yet. And we can kind of uh, talk about that. Maybe Katie can kind of talk about the, uh, our, our uh, biology collaboration in more detail. Well, we're doing um, uh, research about protein structures, and so we're kind of trying to figure out how to. Uh, so you get a list of like all the protein, all the different parts of the amino acids, and we and the data doesn't come in the sequence it's supposed to be in. You just kind of get it, and we're trying to figure out how to sequence that. And I think it's just been a really good experience. Um, personally, like. I didn't know that I wanted to be a computer science major, and then I took the very first class, and I got asked if I wanted to do this research, so I was like, why not? And it's just been a really good experience. I feel like you learn a lot from it, not having like that class assignment, like, oh, I have to turn this in, but really kind of exploring an interest that you like, and you get really good experience with it. It's also, so, and then you also get a really big say in, you can bring your own ideas to the table as well. So you're really thinking about the problem and you're putting a lot of your work in, unlike class projects where they say, create this, or as sometimes you get to more free range. But that's the thing about the research is you put your own ideas into it and thinking it's really something you created and you thought of yourself. You've also done some other research, Jim. 
Yeah. Um, so I, I work with I've worked with several different students. Um, I work a lot with networks, and um, just this past year, I've been working with a student on uh, a really cool project where we're trying to like do what GPS does for outdoors but indoors. So I don't know if any if you know this, but like the GPS works with satellites, and it doesn't always work really well inside. But there are lots of there are lots of applications where um, where you need to be able to do that. Like if you're in a a large building like an airport or a shopping mall or something and you'd, you'd want to be able to have a, a you know location aware application um, so we're working on that and we're using some um, big data techniques um, we're doing a lot of uh, machine learning and using sort of um, collecting data about the environment to help us kind of localize where a mobile device is uh, and so yeah I mean we, we do a lot of different projects different things like that and um, students, I think, usually have a lot of fun with it. We go to conferences with the students. I know last year we took um, a group of students, including Katie, to uh, a, an undergraduate research conference where they got to present their results. And um, it was this really, you know, big event with, with lots of students, lots of professors. It's really kind of a, a cool thing to do. Yeah, it was fun. The other thing else I want to talk about a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, more detail, is our, <clears throat> our data analytics program. So data analytics is basically a combination of, of computer science with analytical methods from uh, statistics, um, that's actual science, and uh, um, what am I missing, Dan? Um, and, and also just basically other walks of life there too. Yeah, I'm trying to get there we go. Point. There we go. So um, the, the big data and data analytics program is basically a new program that we created, um, and basically because of a, a strong need that we've seen um, for from employers that. Uh, yeah, this is a chart projecting that by the year 2018, there's going to be a significant uh, talent gap um, with respect to uh, what the, 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 the need is for students with these skills as opposed to the projected supply for students with these skills, which means that the students that have these, these kind of analytical skills to work with big data sets using computer science skills and using uh, kind of statistical approaches um, are going to be in high demand and probably well paid as well. Um, so data analytics really comes down to kind of the ability to ask questions supported by data assets, choosing analytic methods to be able to make uh, you know fact-based decision making. Instead of using uh, kind of a gut approach, we can actually support our decisions based off of some analytical methods. Um, so right, there's lots of examples of, of of how there's data explosion. Right, there's now there's more uh, hours on video being uploaded to, to YouTube. Um, it's, it's growing exponentially. Um, there's lots of application areas, not only sports, but from financial markets, from weather and climate, to bioinformatics, but lots of applications that can use ability, uh, students with abilities to solve problems, thinking analytically, using computer science skills with kind of a business acumen um, that, can, that can solve big problems, process and crunch big data. So basically what the data analytics program does is it takes the statistical modeling uh, of the skill sets combine them with computational skills, and apply them to an application area. So we're looking for students kind of with a sweet spot with statistical modeling skills, computational skills also applied to a specific area. Those areas um, could be bioinformatics, mathematics, computational science. Insurance. Insurance. Economics, uh, finance. Yeah, we have, uh, we have a list with, with the specialties, right? So maybe we can, we can flip over to that real quick. You see, there's so many we can't even remember because we made this with lots of different options. Um, okay, yeah, so there's like a bioinformatics, actuarial science, um, computational specialty. Um, we have finance, insurance, economics, e-commerce, and marketing, mathematics. That's most of them, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry, I should back over to that. So lots of op opportunities for, for students with technical skills. Um, also opportunities for, for partnerships in, in with the professional preparations as well, like the internships we, we addressed earlier. Um, if you have any questions about that, please don't hesitate to, to contact uh, any of us on the, on the screen here. Um, so here's my email address, here's Dan's email address. Also, I'll flip to uh, this slide, which has uh, my information again, also Professor Manley's information. Um, so again, if you if you're seeing this and have any any specific questions, uh, don't hesitate to to send us an email or or give us a call. We're happy to contact any or, or, or discuss any questions with any potential students. So, so I'll kind of just uh, you know, have uh, 
time where we can kind of wrap up a little bit and kind of get some closing thoughts. What do you think, Dan? Well, I was just going to talk about data analytics because I'm thinking a lot of people may not know what it is. And you, you did a really good job of explaining it. But kind of the way that I look at it is just with, all, with the computing power we have and the analytical power is that basically the world's a data set. And, and, and the modern world is, is looking at everything from a data standpoint, analyzing it using data. So we listed nine or ten specialties there. But I, I would say the specialties are, can be infinite. And basically what, what we're trying to do is we're trying to give students a core set of analytical skills that they can apply to anything. I mean, it could be it could be politics. It could be sports, as we've mentioned. It could be we're, we're going to I'm going to uh, talk with somebody in a couple of weeks about the data analytics and human rights. So there, there's just really that the, the, the number of things that you can apply these te techniques to aren't just nine, but they're kind of, you know, they're limitless. And basically, whatever, if there's something that you like, um, you know, I would bet you, I don't know, I guess I shouldn't make a bet since we're, in a, since we're, you know, given, given we're not supposed to, you know, do that kind of thing as an educational institution, but, but uh, I would just, I would just make a friendly bet that if you like something, there is going to be an application to data analytics to it. And if you like computer science, if you like mathematics, if you're interested in actuarial science, any of those things, you know, you, the, where the world is going is toward using more data in those fields. Katie, what advice would you want to give to, to prospective students considering coming to a point of college? Um, I would tell them that they should definitely visit where they should go if they can, because when I came to Drake, it felt very homey, I guess. Um, so it's good to like just see where you're going to go. Also, really decide. Um, you you want to have an idea of what you want to go into, but sometimes it changes. So if you pick a college, that you think has a good program in it or has a program in th areas you're interested in. That's also a plus. Um, another reason I came to Jake is their math department was better than some of the really small schools <laughs> I looked at. And so I really liked how they have a, a very one-to-one -one contact, but they also have multiple teachers and different fields and you can go to different schools. Um, I want to, while you're thinking, I'll follow up on something you said a couple of times, and that said that you you came here and you ended up studying something you didn't really expect to study no, at all. No, not at all. And I think that's one of the real advantages of Drake. I mean, you know, a, a liberal we have a liberal arts core, uh, so you know, so that people can switch from computer science to mathematics. But we also have several professional schools, and you know, business, journalism, marketing, um, and and so so I think what happens is that students get exposed to a lot of different ideas here. And you know, I've had several advisees that it takes them first. They try one thing, then they try another thing. We we work out. Well, you want to do a course insurance? We'll try something there. And then usually, you know, by the time they're sophomore, junior, they start to figure out what they like. And I think at a smaller school or schools with less opportunity, that would be a really difficult things to do. But I think that's one of the things we really excel at. Yeah. I know. I think I would just conclude with, um, you know, we like to talk to students, so. Uh, this is why we're doing this. So feel free, don't don't hesitate to send us an email or um, if you can come by and uh, try to get a meeting with one of us here. They're always asking us to meet with students and we're always doing it. Um, we love to do it. So so come visit us. Yeah, I love my job. I love working with students. <laughs> um, I think it's just pretty obvious uh, to the students and, and, and other faculty here. So um, we hope you join us here at Vic University. I would say, like like Eric said, we love our jobs, but we also love our students a lot too. I mean, they're they're a blast. <laughs> bye bye.